Prototypical patriots are not a thing of the past. It's a part of the present and the future. Stick around. You're about to be locked in to the Locked On Patriots podcast. You are Locked On Patriots, your daily New England Patriots podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello to all of you, Foxborough faithful. Thank you once again for making Locked On Patriots a daily part of your New England Patriots coverage. Subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts to get the latest episode as soon as it's available. I'm your host, Mike DeBate, and I cover your New England Patriots for Patriots Country of Sports Illustrated. So reach out to me and let me know what's on your mind on Twitter at M-D-A-B-A-T-E-N-F-L. And while you're out there showing some love to the Twitterverse, please be sure to follow the Locked On Patriots account as well, LO underscore Patriots. That's fans, today's episode is brought to you by Ultimate Football GM. If you've ever dreamed of becoming an NFL GM and managing your football franchise, this game is definitely for you. To download the game, just visit ultimate-gm.com or look it up on the app stores. Our listeners get a 100% free boost to their franchise when using the promo code Locked On in all caps. That's fans, once again, thank you for closing out the week in style here on Locked On Patriots. And today on the pod, we're going to be talking prototypical Patriots. And that means the type of player that can thrive here in New England, playing under Bill Belichick, playing under Gerard Mayo, playing under Bill O'Brien. And while it's fun to talk about the veterans, we're going to talk about it one just a moment. In the vein of the draft, which is now less than two weeks away, can't even believe it's coming that quickly, folks. We are talking Pat's prototypes, and we're going to do so with the paleontologist of Pat's nation. Yeah, folks, that's all the Dr. Ian Malcolm references that I dropped yesterday. My good friend, Kyrie Thompson, who you know from WEEI, Boston.com, and NBC Sports Boston, and so much more. He's here with me today to break it all down. So stick around. You are not going to want to miss this. But first, if we're talking prototypical Patriots, we happen to have a pretty good one under center, folks. I know this is going to elicit a little bit of a reaction from the fan base, either positively or negatively, but hear me out. Because as several fans and analysts throughout the region continue to question this man's status with the New England Patriots, Quarterback Mac Jones clearly focused on moving forward in 2023, sounding an awful lot like a prototypical Patriot. The first phase of off-season workouts, don't forget, folks, is scheduled to begin this Monday at Gillette Stadium. And Mac sounds like he's ready to get to work. During a Wednesday appearance at the Boys and Girls Club of Brockton, Mac had a few things to say about the upcoming season. And it came out in the form of a report from WBZ Today on Friday. His words don't sound like a guy ready to leave town, folks. If anything, just the opposite. Here's exactly what Mac had to say. And he said, we're all excited for this next year. And it starts with putting your head down, going to work. We've got a great group of guys. And it's all about how you come together as a team, players, coaches, everybody. He gave those comments to Steve Burton of WBZ. Now, earlier this week, we talked about how Mac had been joined by Bailey Zappi. Mike Gusecki, Tyquan Thornton, Devontae Parker, and others at the South Walpole Community Athletic Complex doing some off-season informal throwing sessions. Now, those collaborative efforts are really helped to change the team's central narrative from one of controversy to camaraderie. And if you don't want to take my word for it, go out there on social media, take a look at some of the clips out there. Tyquan Thornton had a really good one on his Instagram. These guys are wearing costumes. They're having fun with it but they understand the work has to be put in. And to me, when you hear Mac talk about getting together, coming together and putting the work in, it really just continues to be indicative of his commitment to improving for the upcoming season. We know he's got improvements to make, but I believe he has the resolve and the talent level to be able to do them. He's been described as a daily presence by guys like Mike Reese of ESPN, always at the facility, working hard, using team facilities to train, using the field house to make throws. He's also enlisted the help of former NFL quarterback Nick Shimanek, as we've talked about several times here previously on the pod. 
He's improving his mental, his physical preparation regimen. These are all things that a leader does on the field. When you have to lead by example, when you have to lead by circumstance, these are the types of assets and the type of skill set and really the type of background that you need. And Mac Jones is developing that more each and every day by doing what he's doing. And we all know about the problems that he had last year on the field, folks. This is nothing new. Had a pretty good regular season, a uh, rookie season, I should say. And since that time, there's been a regression. And there's no way that anybody can deny that. The high ankle sprain set him back a little bit, but definitely was not the primary cause of it. That was a lack of comfort under Matt Patricia, under Joe Judge, and that has to change this year. And he's got to be able to build on that. If he's going to be the leader of this team, we have to see growth. He cannot finish in the bottom 10 of NFL quarterbacks in terms of completion percentage, positive plays when pressured. That's simply not going to fly anymore. We need better than the 288 passes, 2,997 yards, 14 touchdowns as opposed to 11 interceptions. Hiring Bill O'Brien is definitely going to help some of it, folks, no question. And you can hear it in Mac's voice when he talks about Bill O'Brien. It rejuvenated his resolve, and he even told Steve Burton that their working together could lead to big things on the field. Again, this is a quote directly from Mac. I'm excited to work with Bill O'Brien. I know we all are. It's going to be a great year. We've just got to put the work in. And that's exactly what the Patriots are doing. And he is going to be able to succeed with the type of offense that Bill O'Brien is capable of running. Lead your receivers under the defense, release the ball quickly, deliver it accurately, give your playmakers the space they need, not just to secure the catch, but also to get yards after the catch. That puts points on the board. It keeps the quarterback ahead of the blitz, but most importantly, it keeps him out of duress. Those are three things the Patriots did not do last year. If Matt can help the Patriots increase any of those, or better yet, all three of them, then he's going to go a long way toward becoming a prototypical Patriot. So I think there definitely is an argument there, but he's doing a lot of other things, a lot of other traits that he's developing that make him an honorary New Englander. And I wouldn't be doing my job unless I mentioned that Mac was making these comments while a guest of the Boys and Girls Club of America in Brockton. He continuously puts down roots in order to keep himself grounded, and he does so through the community. The Boys and Girls Club is something that is definitely near and dear to his heart. As a matter of fact, both he and his girlfriend, Sophie Scott, they were named honorary members of the Boys and Girls Club of Metro South on Wednesday in honor of their third visit to the area locations uh, throughout the state of Massachusetts. Don't forget, last March, he made his first appearance at the Boys and Girls Club from Brockton, gave gifts, footballs, a check for $100,000 to help further the organization's efforts to aid the area's youth. He also visited the Gerald and Darlene Jordan Club in Chelsea back in November. He announced that he was choosing the organization as his dedication for the NFL's My Claws, My Cleats. And he did. He wore a real snazzy pair of cleats. Those were auctioned off for charity, and they did go to the Boys and Girls Club of America. And again, this continues to be a real uh, near and dear cause to Mac Jones's heart. And he said so when he talked to Steve Burton and said, you know, obviously a day like today takes your mind off of football and you get to enjoy the kids. I look at role models that I had, and hopefully I can be that for some people here today. I'm sure some people were here last year. You get to see them grow a little bit. It's just cool to see kids turning into young adults. So I'm excited to see the kids and just to tell them to have fun and enjoy everything and focus on school and doing the right things and everything will work out. And it sounds an awful lot like a patriot in that regard, folks. Put the hard work in, things will work. That's kind of a Patriots mantra that we see throughout this region. And Mac seems to be settling in. And visits like that will continue to be heartwarming, not just for Mac, but also for all of us fans. I think even the most staunch um, critic of Mac will advise or at least stipulate that, you know, seeing something like this and seeing him do the great work in the community is something that he deserves a lot of credit for, and rightfully so. But Mac also did not end that media session without letting everyone know that there is still work to be done. In spite of the effort, he's already exhibited the most strenuous toils are about to begin. And he said that, he says, I've definitely been giving it a lot, just like every year, just super excited to get back with the guys here soon and get to work. And that sounds a lot like a prototypical Patriot to me. But who are the Patriots prototypes of the future? 
Well, Patriots beat writer Kyrie Thompson will join me here in just a moment to discuss the draft prospects he believe will be a great fit in Foxborough. Kyrie Thompson joins me when this episode of the Locked On Patriots podcast continues. But first, folks, today's episode is brought to you by our good friends over at Ultimate Football GM. And if you've heard me talk about this mobile app and you feel that you can make a good GM, you got to give this game a try. It's not as easy as you might think to create a dynasty, but it's a whole lot of fun when you play Ultimate Football GM. You're controlling, you're managing every strategic aspect of your team as you play through the seasons and lead your team to glory by trying to build a historic dynasty just like your New England Patriots. You're hiring the coaches. You're managing the finances. You're navigating your franchise through free agency, through the draft, injuries, player issues, all the ups and downs of a season, and it's all in a challenging and realistic game world. And Ultimate Football GM is completely free. It's playable offline, and you can play on the go as you want, when you want to. And Locked On Patriots listeners, listen up, because you get a free 100% boost to your franchise when you get the promo code locked on in all caps in the game store. That's locked on L O C K E D O N in the game store in all caps, utilize it and you will be able to get your 100% free boost. Make sure to check it out today to download the game. Just visit ultimate dash GM.com or look it up on the app stores. That's ultimate dash GM.com ultimate football GM start your dynasty. Patriots fans, thank you so much for making Locked On Patriots a daily part of your New England Patriots coverage. And please take a moment over the weekend to sign up for the Locked On NFL Draft Buzz newsletter. You can find it at LockedOnPodcast.com slash newsletters to sign up for your free NFL Draft newsletter. And each week you'll get a top story from NFL Draft expert Luke Inman, a top five ranking, the links to great draft content across the Locked On Podcast Network, that's the Locked On NFL Draft Buzz newsletter. Find it at LockedOnPodcasts.com slash newsletters. Don't delay. Do it today. The Locked On NFL Draft Buzz newsletter. Here today on the pod is someone that I am very glad, very excited, and long overdue to welcome back here to the pod. You know his great work from WEEI, NBC Sports Boston, Boston.com. You name it, this man has done it and has done it with a class and style all his own on the Patriots beat. He is currently a producer for WBUR and Radio Boston. It is my honor and privilege to welcome back the Dr. Ian Malcolm of the New England Patriots beat, my good friend, Kyrie Thompson. Kyrie, Love welcome it. back to the pod, bud. <laughs> it is great to be back, man. I, okay, look, I just want to say I, I used some Ian Malcolm quotes in a couple of my columns uh, back in the day for WEEI, so I'm really glad you uh, you used that one. I, I consider myself a bit of a chaotician. <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love it. I did tease a couple of uh, Dr. Ian Malcolm uh, tidbits yesterday here on the pod when we did Throwback Thursday, and I was all in the fields of doing, you know, the Belichickian DeLorean, the Back to the Future uh, thing. I did drop some hints, and believe it or not, I actually did have some people uh, DM me and <laughs> guess that you would be our guest today here on Locked On Patriots. And uh, That's no, awesome. bottom line, bottom line, it is my honor, my privilege to welcome you back, my friend. And uh you know, it's always it's it's our, one of our favorite times of the year. Obviously, oh, for yeah. those of us that live and breathe the NFL, the NFL draft is nothing but amazing content. Um, you always always look for the top of the line prospects, the blue chippers. You want to see if they're going to round into form, but it's more than that. There's also the ability of some diamonds in the rough to emerge, and we've seen the Patriots go either way on this. So. Kyrie, let's start off on the defensive side of the ball because defense wins championships. I know you're as locked in as anybody to this 2023 draft class and not just the prospects that you think are going to make great pros, but specifically today, we're talking about pros that may make great Patriots. Top to bottom, defensive side of the ball, who tops your list uh, in terms of a prototypical Patriot in 2023 and beyond? So the first guy that I'm going to think of, and it's a position that a lot of people have been asking about targeting is cornerback. Mm -hmm. Now, I am not necessarily of the view that I think the Patriots need to draft a first round corner. I don't think they need 
think they need to draft a first round corner. They've been perfectly fine with waiting until day two and three to grab guys and fit them in. But if there's one guy that I so badly want to see on the New England Patriots, it's Devin Witherspoon in terms of cornerbacks. Mm-hmm. That guy isn't, I mean, it's not like Agreed. he's particularly big. He's 5'10, 5'11, about 180, uh, something like that. Um, kind of average overall athleticism and, and such, but he is a heat seeking missile. Mm-hmm. He just runs around blowing things up all over the place. You you look at Bruce Feldman had something for the athletic a couple of weeks ago where he he pulled a bunch of college coaches and things that these guys had played against as kind of scouting report material for them. And he he actually messaged me and said this. Those Big Ten coaches are so glad Devin Witherspoon is gone. And they mm. would just be like, you know what, man? Like, we, we would deliberately have the number one receiver just go to the completely opposite side of the field. We didn't want to call flat routes because he knew that some guy was going to get detonated if we did it. Like, I'm so mm. glad he's gone. And that's the kind of thing that you think about. Everybody wants to see the prototypical 6'2", you know, 34-inch arms corner, the guy who looks the part. But when you talk about mm-hmm. a number one cornerback, it's nice to think of a guy that receivers are just like, God, I don't want to face that guy. Please, God. <laughs> like, like, I, I, want, I want nothing to do with that. Devin mm-hmm. Witherspoon's that guy. I, so I just want no part of this man for an entire game. <laughs> yeah, without any question. I mean... I know everyone's enamored with Christian Gonzalez, and there's a lot of reason to be. I mean, when you talk about complete players top to bottom, like you said, this kid really does put together the total package. But I agree with you. I've long thought that Witherspoon is actually maybe, dare I say, the better fit for New England in this regard. Uh, Toughness at the catch point, no question about it. Uh, The way he's able to find the ball and go after the ball in man coverage, to me, I think he has the best skills in this draft class. So... Yeah, no question about it. You're already impressing and breaking the needle off the uh, the wisdom and counsel meter already, folks. So, you know what? He's living up to his uh, chaotician persona right now. And uh, Kyrie, like I said, I'm, I'm definitely impressed so far. Now, we stay on this side of the ball because there is a need, or at least in my humble opinion, there is a need uh, for the Patriots at edge rusher. Uh mm-hmm naturally. I mean, there's no question about it. Dietrich Wise had himself a very good season in 2022. His best season as a pro, Matthew Judon continues to be the darling of this defense as he should be. Josh Uche emerged as a big time uh, threat to get after the quarterback, but I think the Patriots could stand to use a little bit of help in that regard. Top to bottom, when you look at the edge rushers in this class, whether it be a hybrid linebacker that can come in and play that role, or even a defensive end that could play that role. Who do you think would be the ultimate Patriot that could really complement a lot of those guys I just mentioned? It's interesting because when it comes to the edge, there are a couple of different avenues that I feel like they, they like to go. You would like to think that you want the all around the, I, I think the more you know, complete player who's going to both set the edge against the run and a guy who is eventually going to develop into a plus pass rusher. And Lucas Van Ness kind of strikes me as somebody that you might think of in that. Right now, he's a little one-dimensional as a pass rusher. Not a whole lot in the way of, of counters and swims. and re- He's just going into you and busting you up with, with just power, just raw, right. explosive strength. He's got that in spades. But he's also got a little bit of that Dietrich-wise, inside-outside kind of game. You could play him as a defensive end because he's got the kind of strength to do it. But you, you could look at him and say he's best suited in the end to be somebody coming around the outside and coming at you with athleticism, speed and power off the edge. I I think that that's a possibility, but I also think that there are some guys who fit maybe the mold of something more akin to a Josh Uche, somebody that is going to Mm -hmm. need to get paid. And me personally, this is just my personal opinion. I would lean towards Josh Uche not getting paid by the Patriots after this year because mm-hmm. he's a little bit more on the one-dimensional side. He's more of a come-in, rush-the-passer type of guy, not an every-down edge. Maybe we'll see if he can uh, expand his game a bit this year, and then we'll see what happens. But if you're looking for somebody more like that, somebody who is more of a pass rusher with with potential to be more, one guy that, that really stood out to me at the Senior Bowl, this is another, another note. Check the Senior Bowl and Shrine Bowl rosters, because when you look at the first couple picks of every draft, I actually tabulated this out. What is it? 
15 of the last 19 picks the Patriots have made on days one and two of the draft, so rounds one through three, have all been four-year college guys, senior Mm -hmm. at least. So seniors, redshirt seniors, what have you, that played at the Shrine Bowl or or were at the Senior Bowl. Will Will McDonald of Iowa State is one guy like that where he's undersized, he's thin, and so you're like, come on, that, that doesn't fit the bill at all of an every down edge. (laughs) <laughs> but when you look at the way that he plays with kind of that that length and explosive strength, he stands up. They were playing him inside as like a four technique sometimes. Yeah. Kind of like what, as a matter of fact, what Alabama would do with Will Anderson sometimes, where you're like, why is this guy playing so far inside some of the time? Because he can, because he was able to use some of that length and use right. some of the ability to convert strength to power. So he's not the biggest guy, but he was able to hold his own out there. You put a little bit more on that frame and keep the explosiveness. His bend is nuts. I mean, you could see him at the pro day, at, at the combine, just getting down to the ground. I mean, it, it, he's, his whole body is almost down there, dipping around around the bags. I mean, he's got crazy bend around the edge. And you think with a little bit more seasoning and, again, a little bit more just weight on him, I think that's a really interesting second round pick potentially. And then you've got guys that you could look at like Auburn's Derek Hall or mm-hmm. later on San Diego State's Junior Fajalo. I mean, there mm-hmm. are guys that this this edge rusher class is deep. And I expect that if they don't go with that on day one or even day two, you're going to see him pick up some guys on day three for sure, because there there are some possibilities for guys that even if they're not going to be day one starters, they're going to be able to provide depth, play on special teams and work their way up from there. Because I'm 100% with you, the the depth that edge just leaves something to be desired. And we saw Uche step up last year, 11 and a half sacks, finally mm-hmm. be that guy who's going to rush the passer opposite Matthew Judon. But again, you lose Uche at the end of the year if you're not going to pay him. What, do you, what else do you have, right? Dietrich Wise is a guy that kind of, you know, moves in and out, but he's not necessarily somebody you want to just leave on the outside all the time, perhaps. Um, and then, like, Anthony Jennings, right? So you definitely need bodies at that position. Yeah, without any question. And I think you make a lot of interesting points, and really, I think some very good ones. I'm glad that you mentioned Ben Ness, because I don't see a lot of people migrating toward him as a typical Patriots pick, but he checks all of the boxes. And I think you've articulated that perfectly. I think another guy uh, that a lot of people are maybe not talking about in terms of a Patriots fit uh, that maybe they should is Keon White out of Georgia Keon Tech. White. He is, he's a five tech player, no question about it. That's where he's at his best, but he is scheme versatile, work in progress from the technical standpoint. I think there are some fundamentals that still need to be worked on, but if you place him on the edge, you get him outside shade against offensive tackles or against tight ends, I think you can see some things pop there as well. So yep. once Another again, senior I, bowl guy too. Another absolutely. Senior bowl guy. Yeah. Without question. And the new England Patriots definitely love those guys. You mentioned the four years, you mentioned the seniors. He definitely checks that box as does the guys that you've mentioned. And uh, yeah, I mean, Kyrie, I think you're right on the money when it comes to prototypical Patriots. Before we take our leave of the defense, one of the most indelible prototypical Patriots uh, called it a career uh, just uh, last month, Devin McCourty announcing that he will be retiring. And that definitely creates a void at safety. Uh, the free position uh, is kind of up for grabs. We're looking at, you know, the possibility of maybe Jalen Mills coming in, taking on that role. A lot of other guys maybe chipping in, maybe even seeing Jonathan Jones play a little safety, but uh, this is a class that I think has some top heavy potential, maybe some top heavy talent. Can you see the New England Patriots dipping into this position? Is there someone in this draft class that you think might be able to take the mantra someday of what Devin McCourty leaves behind? I think it's tough to put to replace Devin McCourty for so many reasons, <laughs> whether you're talking about the the leadership and just generally his skill set and what he was able to do for so long and be so durable. Like, Kylie, you could rarely take him off the field. I mean, he was always out there. So it's hard to duplicate his skill set. But I think that, I mean, there, there are a couple of safeties in this draft that I've really started to come around to. I mean, everybody loves Brian Branch, and I really like Brian Branch. The thing is, he's mm-hmm. going to go in the first round, and I'm not taking a safety in the first round. Right. That's not worth it. I don't think the Patriots think it's worth it. But, man, if, if if there were any way to get him in the second round, I would be like, yes, God, get yeah. Brian Branch, because I think that he 
absolutely is everything that the Patriots would would just love in a safety. So versatile, so smart. I mean, it's he's not an exceptional athlete. He doesn't have amazing speed, but he just makes plays because he knows where he's supposed to be. And he's, he's another really one of those guys play. that can play deep. He can play in the slot. He can cover you one on one. He can do so many different things. Another guy that I'm really starting to like as a round three kind of pick, you know, day day two kind of guy, is Christopher Smith of Georgia. So he to me, and and there there are other guys that I like later on, like Quindell Johnson, where uh, of Memphis, where I think that you know they're they're kind of that hybrid guy where they're not necessarily like Devin McCourty, where you just stick them back there and they are free safety and that's all that they ever do. But they're so they're, the athleticism, the ability to do everything, the ability to tackle. I feel like we we can't underrate this part: the ability to, if you're going to be on the field as a safety, you better be willing to get down in the box and go make a play, go hit somebody, go separate somebody from the football. Christopher Smith really, really does that for mm-hmm. me. Again, another Senior Bowl guy who was running around and just locking dudes up. And one-on-one drills. And and I feel like that's just something that the Patriots are going to look at and be like, oh, yeah. I mean, they already have – and this is the thing. They already have a bunch of – they have two starting caliber safeties right now that you feel really good about, right? Adrian Phillips and Kyle Duggar. You could be completely fine just throwing those two guys out there. And then you talk about Jalen Mills and the potential for Jonathan Jones to be out there as well. Though I think that would be best served, especially if you get another cornerback, which which would allow Jonathan Jones – to do a little bit more because as of right now mm-hmm. you don't have that that right. depth and vers- that depth and versatility in the cornerback room so I wouldn't do that but you go ahead and you get somebody like like Christopher Smith who I think could probably start just about anywhere else and then you make him one of the new big nickel guys one of the the yeah. new three safety look guys let him work his way into that oh my god you could <laughs> Teams are not going to want anything to do with these Patriots safeties. They're just going to be getting thumped all over the place. <laughs> You're not going to be able to get open on them. I mean, that would be a heck of a chess move. It would be a heck of a chess move. And if you notice the gigantic grin on my face the moment that you mentioned Christopher Smith, running gag here on Locked On Patriots, uh, one of my draft crutches is, is Christopher Smith in terms of the way that he plays the game, his ability to understand coverage techniques. You can see it on the field. You see it when you watch film on him. It just completely hops right off the page. Great football IQ. I mean, there's no question about it. This is exactly what Bill Belichick loves. And the fact that he can block a field goal and take it back for a touchdown, SEC championship game against LSU, you got to love that. So, don't, don't, uh, even, yeah. don't even get Bill started. That, that might, <laughs> if, if, they dra- if they drafted Christopher Smith, I could – I would almost put money on that being one of the first three things he he mentions about Christopher Smith is the absolutely special teams because yeah. the guy loves special teams. He can't help himself. No, he does. He absolutely does. And you know, that will come right out of Bill Belichick's mouth. Block the SEC championship game field goal. You know, LSU, it's great stuff. You know, you know, phenomenal, can do it all. You know, really. I mean, that's exactly what we're going to hear. Uh, I'm actually barred from doing any more uh, impressions for the week, though, folks. Uh, I did a very bad Christopher Lloyd one yesterday, Kyrie. You do not want to hear that. You don't want to see it. Not one of my finer moments. So I'm not going to dip into my Bill Belichick because, as you can see, that's not much better. But what is going to get better, folks, is Kyrie Thompson is going to continue to break the needle off of the wisdom and counsel meter. We're going to talk offensive prototypical Patriots and which he feels may be the best fit for this team moving forward when this episode of the Locked On Patriots podcast continues. Pats fans, thank you once again for joining us here on Locked On Patriots, a proud part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Folks, today we're talking prototypical Patriots to close the week in style with Kyrie Thompson here. Don't forget, Mock Draft Monday returns. The legendary green man himself, Thomas Murphy, and I will break down your great mock drafts. Our third year doing this. Still can't believe it. It feels like yesterday that we started, but we love doing it. So please keep them coming in. Send them in. Drop us a line at LO underscore Patriots to submit your mock drafts, and you may have a chance to have those read here on Monday. But Kyrie, I thank you for joining me here today, and we're already having a blast. I've already uh, dropped a few Ian Malcolm references. Uh, I've already said that I will not do any more impressions for the day. We're off to a great start here, folks. But 
you know, defense may win championships, but offense is going to get the headlines, my friend. And the New England Patriots definitely need some offensive help. Uh, they've got a big piece of the puzzle when they hired Bill O'Brien as their new offensive coordinator. But you and I both know, my friend, it's only as good as the players that are on the field. The coach can put everyone into perfect position, but they need to execute. And the Patriots are going to need execution on the offensive line, at wide receiver, maybe even now at tight end a little bit. Uh, there's a lot of needs for this team. When you look top to bottom, seeing that the theme here today is prototypical Patriots, who checks your box on an offensive standpoint, bud? Darnell Wright. I'm just going to come out with it. That's my guy. Like the, I, the, as well. I mean, come on. The, the more I think about it, I, I, I get it. I get it. Everybody looks at the top offensive tackles like, oh, yeah, you got to get one of those. Paris Johnson Jr., Broderick Jones, Pierre Skaronsky, got to get one of them. I look at, and, and, okay, those are good players. But, again, I think about the fact that even Peter Skaronsky, whom everybody seems to be like, oh, yeah, he'd be a perfect Patriot, only a two-year starter. Right. Mm. And, and I mean, he's, he's a, you know, coming out as a, as a red shirt sophomore. Those other guys are coming out as juniors, red shirt sophomore, what have you. Darnell Wright started 42 games in college. Mm. I mean, it, he started on both the left and right side as a tackle. He is, I'm, you can't, you can't draw up a better fit for, for a right tackle in the Patriots scheme than Darnell Wright. You just you right. can't, you can't make him up. I mean, he is a, he is a monstrosity on gap runs. He just goes around burying bodies and, and throwing people to the turf all, all, all the time. And and the idea of putting him next to Mike on when just, just sounds like a torture chamber, like my mm -hmm. goodness. And then you look at what he did from a pass protection perspective. I mean, is it always perfect? Is the technique perfect? You know, gets caught leaning a little bit, could use a little bit more bend in it, but when he gets his hands on you, you're done. You've gotten, you, you're finished. You're out of the play. He put Will Anderson in witness protection. He had <laughs> BJ Ojolari, like wondering which way was up. I mean, he, he routinely did this against some of the right. best talent this draft has to offer from an edge rusher perspective. What more, again, senior bowl had a, Kill, a killer senior bowl. What more could you want? I just feel like you can talk about those other guys and yeah, maybe they got more upside or what have you. But again, think what, what are you looking for? If you're the new England Patriots, Th this is where the, the, the debate comes in. Yeah. you love the idea of upside and oh yeah, you could be a, a pro bowler, all pro down the road, but those guys, especially the, the top three need a little bit of work. And even Pierce Skaronsky is a little bit more technician, what have you. There are a lot of people thinking he, he's not going to be a tackle long-term in this league because of the arm length. You might have to slide him inside to guard. Mm -hmm. Darnell Wright of any of those guys to me is the one that I'm looking at. Like that guy could be a day one starter. You don't got, mm -hmm. yeah, he's a, he's a rookie. There are going to be some growing pains, but you could put him out there week one and you could expect him to be able to hold his own and eventually, by the end of the year, you're looking at him like that's an all-rookie type player. So, to me, that's number one. Number two, my man Zay Flowers, man. Look, you could talk about the he's, he's too small or, or, or what have you. I don't want a receiver in the first round because we need the offensive line figured out. I've been using this analogy a bunch because somebody actually said it on air to me one time. I thought it was great. I'm going to flip it around, though. People are like, you can't operate. It's like it's like having a car. Not right. having an offensive line is like not having wheels. Like you just can't drive the car. You're not getting it anywhere. Whereas, oh, yeah, having a receiver or running back or good skill players is like the high performance engine. Like, yeah, you don't really need it. Well, if you want to play in today's NFL and you want to play with Kansas City and Cincinnati and what have you, yeah, you kind of need the performance engine. You're and right. the Patriots definitely didn't have that last year. They didn't not make the playoffs because of the defense or because of the offensive line, they didn't make it because the offense just in general was an absolute mess and they yeah. don't have anybody. Anybody is afraid of. Okay. Mm -hmm. Zay flowers might not even necessarily be that guy right now where you're just like, Oh my God, I got to draw the game plan around him. But you think about the fact that he put up 1100 yards last year with like Phil Jerkovic as his quarterback, just throwing the ball completely off the field and, and just, like, not being able to find him consistently. He was the only thing that Boston College consistently had going for it, and he still put <laughs> up numbers. To me, yeah. what more could you want from a guy 
than that to be able to say, you know what, like I, I, you know, I'm going to get the ball and I'm still going to put up numbers on you. I'm still going to score. I'm still going to make plays. And again, the character could have, could have gone into the draft a year early, chose not to stay right. for another year and got better. Right. Mm-hmm. And then of course they had him at the shrine bowl and he was down there running the Wes Welker and Julian Edelman Haas juke type Jim routes. Jim. <laughs> he came in, they picked him up at the airport and, and, you know, Tom Pelissero was like, he got there early to help, to learn the offense with Bill O'Brien. I'm sorry. Does that, how could you not think of a prototypical Patriot when you hear that? Absolutely. 100% on the money. First of all, I love that you've mentioned both Wright and Zay Flowers, because in terms of prototypical fits here in New England, I am hard pressed to find two guys that are more perfect for this offense. And really from a need perspective, but also from an attitude perspective, I fell in love with Darnell Wright when he pulled out his phone at the uh, combine (laughs) and started telling you how he broke down Will Anderson, how he defended BJ, how he got these guys and he's giving you his notes and they're right there. They're right in his hip pocket at all times, really just studying and continue to be a student of the game. Um, And not only the physical prowess that he brings to the table, but also that mental preparation, uh, that just that ability to constantly want to get better. What says more about the Patriots than that? And then say flowers is a guy that I continue to fall in love with more and more when it comes to his fit here in New England as well. I was, still am a huge Jackson Smith and the Jigba fan, but oh, yeah. I would not be. That's, uh, wide, you know, that's just, wide receiver one. Yeah, yeah he me. really Jackson, is. Jackson Smith yeah. and Jigba is wide receiver one. Don't care if he's a pure slot. Don't get caught up in that. I'm no. sorry. Like when you go watch that guy play, he's he's a monster. Okay. Yeah. Zay Flowers, I mean, he, he's not quite that level to me. Mm. But that dude is he's just, he's a dog. He's just yeah. a certified dog. He's just going to go out there and make plays. I don't know. I don't know what else you could want. Absolutely. And Bill O'Brien is definitely salivating at the thought because you know he loves his yak. This is a kid that can get it for him. You mentioned he did it in one of the worst offenses. Sorry to all my Boston College brethren. Well, you know what? I'm not that sorry. I'm a PC guy. So, you know, I'm not going to be too complimentary about Boston College. No, just kidding. I'm only kidding, folks. But uh, no, it really is. I mean, he really did not have a whole lot on offense to work with. Even the staunchest Eagles fan can admit that. And um, yeah, to see him do it here and to see him do it on the other end, Mac Jones, uh, I think would be uh, something special here for the New England Patriots. So did we check all of your boxes, folks, when it comes to prototypical Patriots? Who did Kyrie and I forget today? Or do you completely agree with what he has to say? I think you'd be hard-pressed to disagree. But you know what, folks? Variety is the spice of life in the name of the game. And we always welcome your feedback here. But the one thing that we always welcome is Kyrie Thompson on these airwaves here on Locked On Patriots. You're a true asset to the beat, my friend, and it is my honor, my privilege, not only to share the microphone with you, but also to share this uh, endeavor that we both, uh, you know, keep going after each and every day. So uh, my best to you, my friend, and I thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to join me here today. Before I let you go, please let everyone know where they can reach out to you, what they can expect coming down the pike, and, um, you know, maybe a little hope that uh, you'll be back here on these airwaves really soon. (laughs) Oh, I mean, you can have you can have me on here anytime. All you got to do is ask. You don't even you even got to worry about that. Thank you, my friend. You can follow me at KD Thompson five. I'm not doing quite as much in the writing department yet. I mean, we'll we'll see we'll see how that goes. Might be might be some podcasting stuff going on down the line. But right now, I'm over at WBUR. Every once in a while, you will catch me doing some sports roundups on there. And I'm definitely going to be pushing for a sports roundup when the Patriots make their draft picks and and going in on that and doing that for Radio Boston. But otherwise, you can always catch me on Twitter. That's football's mo like, I don't know, like 98% of the stuff I tweet about. (laughs) And I would love for your feedback on this episode, guys that, that you're excited about for the Patriots around the league or what have you. Football is, uh, you know, definitely one of my one of my favorite things to, uh, you know, to, to monitor out there. It's one of my favorite things to cover. And uh, in the words of Ian Malcolm, uh, there it is. 
what better way to end the show, folks? I'm not even going to try to go beyond that, just other than to say thank you very much for joining me today. You always have a welcome uh, seat here on Locked On Patriots. We can't wait to have you back on again, Kyrie. And folks, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule all week long. All of you Locked On Patriots, every day is out there. From the bottom of my heart, I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for all of the support you provide to the show. And don't forget, Monday is Mock Draft Monday. So if you haven't done so yet, there is still time to send in your mock drafts to LO underscore Patriots. You can drop me a line as well at M-D-A-B-A-T-E-N-F-L. Feedback on this episode when it comes to prototypical Patriots. Give my man Kyrie a follow at KD Thompson five. Definitely check him out and let him know what he may have missed or what he may have got right on the money. It's on behalf of Kyrie Thompson. I am Mike debate. Continue to stay safe and stay well and be the change that you wish to see in the world. Have a great day, everyone. And a great weekend. We'll see you Monday here on locked on Patriots.